nightmare continues! <laughs> What's up, everybody around the world who's excited for a great show today? I know I am. What's up? What's up? The nightmare continues. <laughs> Shit, I don't know about you, but I've been listening to Discharge all day. It's like a big Discharge day around here. All day. Old and new. Doing my homework. What's up, everybody? What's up, Daniel? What's up, Alan? Jason, good to see everybody around the world. What's happening in Ecuador, man? What's happening down in South America, brother? Josue, Josu, how are you, man? Thanks for tuning in in Ecuador. We're doing it. Good evening in Northern Ireland. All right. Chris Corkum, what's up? Holding it down up in Salem, I hope. Anyway, you know what this is? This is the New York Hardcore Chronicles Live, sponsored by New York Hardcore Comics, The Organic Grill, The Texas Silver Rush, and Chain Reaction Records and Skateboards. How about The Texas Silver Rush? It's a jewelry design firm and boutique store located in the birthplace of the Texas country music scene in Fredericksburg, Texas. They specialize in working with musicians in all music genres to create and design unique one-off pieces, as well as to style them for stage, album covers, promo photos, and social media exposure. Their client list includes Rock and Roll Hall of Famers, Greg Rollet, Ringo Starr, and of course, Agnostic Front. During this current, current pandemic, all information and online sales are being taken. Their Facebook and Instagram pages, and of course, www.texassilverrush.com. Hold on, I'm trying to get up to speed here, you know? Hold on. Let me put some, let me put some earbuds in. Hey, bud. Let me put some earbuds in. So there you go. Um, that said, how about I just want to uh, let you know about a couple of the shows that are happening. Uh, coming up this Sunday is the lead-in, the big lead-in show to the Bowery Electric live streaming event. This Sunday is Craig Sil our boy Craig Silverman. From Agnostic Front and Slapshot, Only Living Witness, American War Machine. That is the lead-in to this event that I'm sure everybody's going to go out and buy a ticket for. Right? Right? This event right here, this Sunday, streaming live. Live premiere session, Save Our Stages. It is Stigma, Antidote, New York Hardcore, and The Craze. Tickets are available at www.thebowerelectric.com. Please 
get a ticket tomorrow. Yes, Daniel, get a ticket tomorrow, all that. Um, so there you go. Hardcore lives worldwide, Ian Welch. That's right, brother. There you go. Um, so there, that said, uh, Craig is happening. And then a week from today, a week from today is channel three. What's up? Actually, it's not a week for today. What am I, what am I missing here? Did I skip one? Hold on. Yes, of course. But of course, how could I forget this one? A week from today. Here we go. It's Carl from Earth Crisis. Whoa. Here we go. That's a week from today. Uh, and also, while we're at it, I want I just got in the mail uh, yesterday. I got uh, Busky's Attitude Exhumed Earth Crisis book. Smash or be smashed. So we're going to talk about that on the Carl Earth Crisis show as well. And also, after that is Channel 3. What's up? channel three and then so on and so so on and so forth hey laurent how's france brother hope you're out there yep there you go hey what are you doing what are you doing let's do photo of the day <laughs> what's up what's up how you how are you man i'm in the box I've been working on the railroad all the live long day. <laughs> I'm in the box. All right. Let's do photo of the day. All right. Yeah, let's do it. All right. Let me find this friggin' thing. Uh, photo of the day. Now. Okay. Anybody out there know who this is? Here we go. Photo of the day. Let me see. Let me see. Photo of the day. If anybody knows, post it up. I do not know who this is, man. I must say, I must say, looking at this, I do not know who this is. So could use some help with this one. I mean, dude's got an interesting tattoo. He's got a discharge tattoo of, on his arm, right? You caught that. Is that? It's a discharge no, tattoo? No, I, I think it's a 45 grave, I think. Oh, I see. Yeah. Forty-five gray. It, gray it looks tattoo. like a, it's a tattoo of a flyer. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, All right, that's here we cool. go. All right, here we go. Wow, everybody's everybody's. No effects. No effects. Fat Mike Danzig. No effects. Fat Mike. No effects. Seems like there's and a lot of seems like high on <laughs> high on fire. High on fire. Social distortion. No effects. <laughs> Is that Fat Mike? That is Fat Mike. This is no effects. Yeah, this I is. Do not, uh, we don't do too yeah. much no effects here. I figured I'd throw one into the mix, you know? Tell you the truth, I don't really know a lot about this band. You know what? They got some great stuff. They got some great records. I mean, I, I, know, I know they're an epitaph band, right? El Jefe yep. and Fat Mike. Okay. Oh, oh yeah. All right, tell us a little bit about this, where it's from, yeah. and all. Yeah, he's he, he's he's got a, quite a story, Fat Mike. You know. Well, this is is two thousand nine uh, Nassau Coliseum parking lot warp tour, uh, which was that Yex had bands like like Chiodis. If I said it right, right. Um, you know, tons and tons of bands. Uh, the casualties were on, on this bill. Hey, you're breaking up, man. It, it's you're was, breaking up. My suggestion would be to sign back in and we'll try again. Well, there you go. Photo of the day. Guy kind of yoked. There's another one. Let me put the other one. He sent another one. Uh, where is photo of the day number two? Um, here you go. Here's another one. Uh, 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 uh. kind of, kind of that kind of, there you go. Here's another one. Obviously, I don't know a lot about this band. Um, I guess it's no effects. 
uh, and that's Fat Mike and El Jefe. So, so there you go. Um, you, you with us? I'm with you. That hasn't happened in a while. Yeah, well, talk fast, bro. <laughs> Where were we? Well, it's no effects at the Nassau Coliseum parking lot. 2009, it was no effects, bad religion, flogging Molly, and so on and so forth. And uh, it, a great, great set. All the, all the big Epitaph bands were there that year. And it was really, uh, it was, you know, it was one of the great ones. You know, and if you haven't, you know, it, I think they're kind of underrated because people always go to, you know, to, to Bad Religion and some of the other bands, but uh, No Effects has some tremendous stuff, you know. There you go. Mark Tulse says they haven't put out a good album in over 20 years, so you're not missing much. <laughs> there you go. See, it's an acquired taste, I guess. I'm actually a big fan yeah. of like the last three or four, to be honest. So I guess uh, me and Mark will have to agree to disagree. There you go. All right, man. Let's keep it moving and grooving. I'll talk to you soon. You got it. All right. Thanks, man. Back in the... There you go. Uh, happy Jack love of my SSD control. Yo, I, I wore the SSD control shirt sort of uh, in homage to our guest today and the band that he plays in because SSD control, you know, got their name from the discharge song D control, right? Decontrol, decontrol. We've been shit on for far too long. Yeah, that's where SSD Control got their name. Maybe you didn't know that. No, no, TV sketch. No, no, TV sketch. All day, this all morning discharge. You know, all day. So, wow. Listen, I, I listen. I, I guess this uh, no effects thing stirred up some drama in the chat room, huh? I didn't know about this stuff. You know, I don't know. You know, so I apologize. But whatever, you guys can duke it out in the chat room. Um, so that said, uh, let me get to, uh, it's the New York Hardcore Chronicles Live, sponsored by the Organic Grill, Texas React, Chain Reaction Records and Skateboards, the Texas Silver Rush, and New York Hardcore Comics. New York Hardcore Comics opened back in 2013. When lifelong friends Debo to Pro and Lee Fairley combine their collections and obsessions for comic books, punk rock, toys, statues, magic, the gathering, and all things horror. The store is located at 117 Main Street in Dobbs Ferry, New York. If you want to support them during this pandemic, please contact them by email at newyorkhardcorecomics at gmail.com. That said, let me get, let me get rid of the infamous uh, no effects photo that's causing all the drama. Yo, I'm trying, bro. I'm trying to get the show on the road. Hey, but, before, but let, me, let me just mention this, too. Let me mention um, that Mark Scandato's coming on the show. That's happening. Look, I'm trying to get all the shit out of the way. So uh, Mark Scandato's coming on the show Wednesday, uh, September 23rd from Shutdown. Also, we are premiering the No Redeeming Social Value Rap Bones video. So make sure you tune in for that. The Rap Bones video is pretty great if I do say so myself. And then, of course, we got the Ramones tour manager, Monty Melnick, coming on the show. That is going to be awesome. He was the tour manager for over 2,200 shows, author of On the Road with the Ramones. So make sure you check for that. Also, while we're at it, I want to remind everybody, come be a patron on the Patreon page. Support this show. There's a $2 tier, a $5 tier, a $10 tier, a $25 tier, 96 tiers. Support this show. Support me as an artist. Uh, by the way, we're doing a, we're going to do another, we are going to do another uh, People's Choice show uh, where basically the guests, the guests for the show are going to be you, people, people on the Patreon page. So uh, that's coming up. We're pulling that together. Uh, Sunday, October 4th. Uh, we did it once before. It was a lot of fun. Uh, just bringing people on the show from around the world. Uh, our guests, we are going to have some guests on that show. Uh, the band Reaching Out, all teenage kids from New Jersey that just put, put out some music. We're going to have them on as our guests. So that's the People's Choice uh, show starring you, motherfucker. So there you go. Uh, that said... 
That said, um, let's bring our guest on. I'm sorry if I'm moving in slow motion today. <laughs> I don't know. It, sometimes it takes me a little, a little time to get up to speed. You know what I mean? This might be what this this might be one of those uh, one of those uh, shows. Ooh. There you go. Yes, Justin. Hey, what tier has the footage of the cheap Tijuana hookers? Any tier, any tier. To the two dollar tier, just come join Patreon, and uh, you get to see all the never before released footage, and it's like our community within a community. Um, so there you go. Oh, there you go. Oh, Al Barilla, you checking in now? I just mentioned that you guys got the name from the Discharge song. Decontrol, decontrol. We've been shit on for far too long. Anyway, actually, I don't drink coffee. I've never drank coffee in my life. Nope. I got my ginger tea, though. Yep. What's up, Johnny Rock? How are you, buddy? Hope you're well. All right, listen, enough of me, en enough, enough of me talking about me. Let's hear you talk about me. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah, here we go. Let me clear the deck here. Let's bring our guest on. Enough of this, enough of this, enough of this dicking around. All right, here we go. Here we go. Here we go, yo. Here we go, yo. Today's guest is an American singer and songwriter hailing from the Garden State. New Jersey, and now residing in Stoke on Trent, England. He's best known for his work with the bands Dead Heroes, Broken Bones, and of course, The Mighty Discharge. Please welcome, coming at us from across the planet, Jeff J.J. Janik. Buddy. <laughs> hey, cheers. All right, yeah, ginger tea. <laughs> What's happening, buddy? What time do you call this? Yeah. It's my yeah. bedtime, man. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Hey, you were right about uh, Fat Mike's tattoo. It is a discharge tattoo. It is? Like, yeah, it is. It's like an old flyer. I, I thought it, I, yeah, I thought it did was. did that punk rock bowling, and uh, yeah, he, he came up to me and showed me the tattoo. So we had a photo together with discharge uh it's like an old flyer. I think, I think the Misfits were on the show as well. That makes sense. So yeah. hey, uh, so 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 where are you right now? Tell it like where are you right now? Right now I'm in my house. <laughs> I know, I know, but you, you are, <laughs> but but you are you in uh, are you on uh, Stoke uh, uh, Stoke, Stoke on, on Trent? Trent? I'm just I'm outside of Stoke on Trent, England. I'm in a. Uh, a medieval market town called Leek, which is just outside of Stoke on Trent. So Got Stoke it. on Trent's a big city. Leek is a little town. And uh it's much quieter. Yeah. So tell us what was happening when this whole when the shit hit the fan. Uh, were you guys on the road? Were you planning shows? Like get, bring us up to date with discharge. Yeah, pretty well, pretty much we had shitloads of fucking gigs. You know, festivals, whatever you want to call it, booked. And then this happened, and it's it, everything's canceled or postponed. So, you know, it's just uh, just pulled the fucking carpet from under our feet. So, you know, it is what it is. Nothing we can do about it. So it's just a big waiting game. Yeah. That sucks, man. It does. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it's it's a it's a big waiting game for 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 about a year, huh? Yeah, yeah, and maybe even longer, who knows, you know what I mean? So, it is what it is. I mean, I'm not sweating it. Uh, I've been keeping busy, you know what I mean? Doing other things, you know, working on new projects and stuff. So, it's actually, you know, it's it's been pretty nice having the, you know, the break from, from touring and all that. So, yeah. Hey, is that right? Was Lemmy born in Stoke, too? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And, and Slash, uh, and Slash from Guns N' Roses. Yeah, Slash from Guns N' Roses from here. Lemmy was born here. And funny story, our our roadie Slate, what's up, Slate? Uh, lives in Lemmy's old house. Who does? Uh, it's our roadie. Oh. Yeah, one of the guys you know, who comes on the road with us helps out. 
Uh, yeah, he lives in Lemmy's old house. And uh, wow. they, I think the city wanted to come and put a plaque on the house, but his wife said no. <laughs> and I don't think they wanted, like, you know, tourists coming around trying to find the house and stuff. So, but, yeah, it's interesting little fact. Wow, that's crazy. So, so tell us. So, by the way, I like that accent you have for a New Jersey guy. Is that I like? <laughs> what's up with that? What's up with that accent? Don't ask. Don't ask. I've been I've been here for twelve years. All you know, all the British people here, they're like, "You're American." Wow, like you know, they hear me speak to say, "You're American." And I talk to my family, my friends. Like, what the fuck? You sound British. So I'm, you know, I'm in the middle somewhere. I can't wait. It is what it is. Yeah. That, that's funny. It's like the longer I, you the longer you stay over there, you start to develop this accent, you know? Well, well, it's true because, I mean, when I moved over, when I first, I used to have a really heavy New Jersey accent. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I moved over here, people didn't know what the fuck I was saying. They just, they couldn't understand me at all. So I kind of had to, like, just speak in a way that, like, made sense to them you know just in a way that they could somewhat understand me even even though it's the same language you know it's english but it's very different you know what i mean um because when i come over here i didn't know what they were talking about so yeah I'm, I'm excited to get to the bottom of this how did this fucking guy from new jersey end up singing for one of the most incredible influential punk bands <laughs> in 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 the you know from england but but we'll get to that but so okay. so you grew up in new jersey tell us tell us about like like how did music come into your life i mean and what was it like give us a little of your background growing up in new jersey yeah so originally i mean born originally from irvington new jersey um which was a pretty rough place and then uh you know my family basically want to get out of there. So we moved down the shore by like Tom's River, Seaside Heights area. Um, so that's pretty much where I grew up. And then as far as me, you know, I got into, I got into skateboarding, you know, as a young kid in the eighties, uh, I was skateboarding and I used to go and, you know, watch the skate, it was your skate shop and read like the skate videos and stuff. And you'd always hear like, you know, Black Flag and fucking Agent Orange playing in the background and all that shit. And uh, I loved it, you know. It was, uh, it just spoke to me, that music. And then uh, my sister's boyfriend, she's going out with this guy, and he left the Dead Kennedy's Plastic Surgery Disasters tape at my house, cassette. And I listened to that, and I was just like, I was blown away by it. And, uh, Ever since then, I was just hooked, you know what I mean? I was just hooked. I mean, before that, I mean, this, you know, I was 10 years old at the time. I was a young kid when I was into this. And before that, you know, I was listening to, like, my parents' music, like, the doors and shit like that. And I still love them, you know? But uh, that, that was really my introduction to music. You know? what, did, was, did, was there music in your household? Were your parents into music? They like listening to music. They didn't play music or nothing like that. I was probably the only, the only person in my family, apart from my cousins. Hey, you know, they played punk back then. But I was really, you know, no one else was really musical. There was no history of, you know, musicians or anything like that. Um, basically, I just got into it and uh, I got into the punk thing, and then literally, like, I think it was in school when I was in school. I pay, I started playing the drums. And uh, I took lessons like through school, and you know that the school band and all that shit. And it was like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick the drums because that's the only thing you can play in a rock band. You can't play the fucking trombone or the fucking saxophone. You know what I mean? So I was like, right, I'll learn the drums. I did that, and uh, probably by the time I was like 13. We started, started my first band, which, funnily enough, was called Chaotic Discharge. And uh, hey, how old do you hear? How old are you here in this picture? <laughs> Probably about twelve. I, yeah. I, I like, I like, I like the Sid, you rock of the Sid Vicious. <laughs> well, in in Jersey, what what 
What what school yeah. did you go to? What 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 school was it? Was this? Um, uh, Tom's River East. It was called. Yeah. Tom. Yeah. That's pretty. But, that's, uh, yeah, my my first band. We started a band. A couple of friends. Chaotic Discharge. Yeah. And, uh, at the time, I mean, we had never I'd never heard of this. You know, Discharge. And then we started playing shows and stuff like that. And uh, everybody used to ask us, Are you guys Discharge fans? Like, you know, because of the name Chaotic Discharge. They say, oh, you must be like a DB fan. Or, you know, you're into Discharge. I was like, you're fucking Discharge. <laughs> Never heard of them. And uh, finally, somebody lent me a Discharge record live at City Gardens. And it was fucking shit. I hated it. I was like, this is fucking crap. What the fuck is this? I was like, fuck this jaw. like, and then, uh, yeah, but then then later on, somebody made me a mixtape. I think it was actually uh, Picasso. It came from a guy no, named well, Picasso. Let me, let, me, let, me, let me say also, like, you know, that's that's a tough introduction to Discharge, that record. You know what I yeah. mean? Like, like, of all, of all, like, you know, of all the stuff, like, hey, listen to this. If I, yeah. you know, you hear that 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 record that's sort of like ugh, you know it's yeah, like it's a bad record you know, you know like the first record. you know the first discharge i heard and i'm a couple years older than you the first discharge i heard in 1981 was you yeah. know the, you know you know the the, the first couple of, of singles you know and, and then and then why came out and we were like holy shit. we were like wow yeah yeah that shit is serious man so yeah. i can I can only imagine that City Gardens record. Ew, you know? <laughs> yeah, it was fucking terrible. Yeah, so anyway, fast forward a bit. I had a mixtape that uh, somebody made. It was a guy named Picasso from a band called Mankind. It was uh -huh. like kind of passed down to, I think they were Connecticut bands. Uh, so it was like passed, passed down to a friend of mine. And the first, the first song on that tape was Decontrol. But I didn't, you know, there was nothing written out. Yeah, there you go. So I didn't, I didn't know who the fuck it was because it was, you know, I didn't know who any of the bands on this tape were. So the first song was Decontrol. Like I said, I was a drummer at that time. I heard Tez a drummer. And I was like, fuck, this is pretty good. Like, who is this band? And then uh, I found out, you know, it's Discharge. I was like, really? I was, it was like, I thought Discharge was shit. <laughs> But yeah, that changed my mind when I heard D Control. It just like completely changed my mind. I'm discharged, but uh, but yeah, to be to be honest, I was never like, you know, discharged fanboy. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, that's when I was that's, drumming. That's, that, that's that's you playing playing drums, right? Yeah, that's my yeah. That's my old bedroom. The house. Like that's your old bedroom. That's my bedroom. Yeah. That's awesome, man. Yeah, we used to just fucking, you know. That's that's awesome. Yeah, fuck. chaotic discharge. But uh, yeah. So anyway, you know, it changed my mind on discharge. A bit, but uh, I was actually into Broken Bones before that. I was probably more of a Broken Bones fan than I, you know, than I was into discharge. But uh, I think I got more into discharge after I moved to Stoke. You know, because that's. It's where this shots are from, so you know, it just kind of came naturally, I suppose. Hey, so um, I want to bring a friend of yours on uh, from New Jersey. You guys spent yeah. a bunch. Of, you, you guys spent a bunch of years growing up together, right? right. And and so let's bring on uh, a, an old friend of yours, and he's a friend of ours, Rat Bones. What's up? Hey, what's up, Rat? What up, Jeff? What up? So, so you guys have you guys have a bit of a history together. Tell us about it, Rap Bones. Yeah, I, I I can remember meeting Jeff. I guess maybe at fourteen, maybe not twelve, but I remember you had the little helmet on, and uh, my friend Rich Beatty was like the one kid in town with the mohawk and Tom Trevor, and I <laughs> like I was living in a U-Haul in a U-Haul lot, and I would <laughs> go to Rich's room when his parents would go to work, and like crash in his room and then we'd get up and have breakfast and we'd sit on the porch and we'd build half pipe ramps and skate in his driveway and the, the high school was right across the street and I believe we met Jeff in front of the library doing hand plants on the library bench and we were like yo this kid can skate and then <laughs> and then you know 
it's cool to think of a time like that when like age didn't matter. We were just interested in like another member of the tribe, you know, like we knew he was punk. We could feel his vibe. And I think it's cool to uh, remember that time when like we got each other's bands off each other's shirts and jackets. Like if you seen a, a punk back in the day and he had some really rad bands on his leather, you'd go check out what English dogs was. Cause you knew GBH and, you know, it's kind of cool how like, we used to network back then, like each other. You know? Yeah, that's, that's exactly how you found out about the band. You, you know, you met other people, you saw their t-shirts, you saw exactly. his written jackets, you know what I mean? And, uh, that was that. I think when I, when I met you, I had that GBH t-shirt on. I think that's how we started talking. Yeah. I'm, glad, I'm glad you remember that, man. Yeah, I mean, well, it's it's we've we've talked. This has come up many times, and and uh, not just on the show, but but uh, in my film, as, even in, in the um, in the film I did, uh, XXX All Ages, XXX Boston Hardcore film. Uh, I think Jamie from D Control says like you spy somebody with like a black flag button or something, and immediately you, you know I know that you know that I know that you know you know. And, uh, yeah. And, and that that's the that was the bond back then. That's exactly we were very like few and far, you know what I mean? Especially where we lived, right? There wasn't yeah. many of us, you know what I mean? So yeah. automatically, you know, it was like that's it, that, that these are my people. You know what I mean? And, and so, this is, this was in this was in Tom's River, New Jersey. That's right, yeah. Yeah, Tom, yeah. Oh <laughs> fuck, man. It's true. Awesome. For high school, man. I could only yeah. imagine what Tom's River was like back then, man. Ah. Just we used to get in fights every time. Everybody wants to beat the fuck out of you. You know what I mean? I used to walk down the street. I, mean, I couldn't. I couldn't walk to the fucking store without the police stopping me and searching yeah. me. You know what I mean? Seaside Heights is a whole another chapter of that era. Yeah. Like, <laughs> go there on vacation. Go home on probation. You know. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's exactly it. Yeah. Hey, no, the cops. You know, the cops down there in Jersey do not play, man. No, no. I gotta, I gotta say to Joe, uh, uh, you know, I, I consider myself a Pied Piper type in this. You know, like I draw the kids in and I, I give them a little guidance on what bands are good. And to see what you've done with yourself, brother, man, I'm, I'm, I'm proud to be. Uh, do you know what band you got me into? It's incredible to me. I dig it, man. Yeah, I, man. Do, you, do you know what band you got me into? I remember when I was young. I think I had a tape off you, Son of Sam, from Detroit. Yeah, man. Back Son of Sam. Yeah. Uh, Lacey, yeah. Lacey has a band right now called uh, Detroit Four Four Two, and they're really good. Okay. Wow, yeah. They're still going. Yeah. I'm wow. trying to get yeah. a Detroit show for us. <laughs> Son yeah. of Sam from Jersey, Rap Bones. No, Son of Sam from Detroit. 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 Lacey, Detroit. I'm trying Sorry. to hook up the Heresy Lacey connection. With the guy who used to run the Greystone, hopefully we'll get that going. Yeah, yeah, cool. So, um, so you know, Vinny, uh, excuse me, Jeff. You know, you mentioned to me that you used to skate. Uh, you, you were sort of sponsored. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I was. You know, I skated for years, like literally since I was like six years old, and uh, I was probably skated right up to the time I discovered asses. <laughs> And uh, yeah, I used to be sponsored. I used to, I used to travel and do competitions. And uh, yeah, I was sponsored by a company called Dead End, which is actually from New York. Yeah, guy named Vinny Raffer. Uh, Vinny, yo, I saw Vinny Raffer recently. Get out, really? Yo, I saw Vinny Raffer like right before the COVID thing hit. He works in the <laughs> film business now. <laughs> yeah, you know, you know what Vinny Raffer does now? Now, now I got a couple of Vinnie Raffer shirts. He gave me a whole bunch of shirts. He still makes the no shirts way. and everything. Yeah. And, but Vinnie Raffa uh, um, has a company that uh, in the film business, they have these lights that are like, like balloons that, that go up and like light, light up a set, you know, like they're, they're big, powerful lights and, and they, they, they raise them up like, like it's the moon or, 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 or you, you know, it goes up over the set. And, and lights everything underneath it. And Vinny Raffa works for a company that, that, that does that. They do lighting on for movies. Wow. So, yeah, man. So, I, always, so he's still busy. I guess he's found his, uh, 
Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he still does his thing. He still makes T-shirts. He he shows up and gives fucking T-shirts to everybody. Wow. Yeah, I, I haven't seen him in over thirty years. Like I said. Yeah, for those, for Dude, those, you know what? For the hold on, for those in New Jersey, Vinny Rafa. It was it was Dead Earthware, right? Is that what it was? When when oh, I was oh, oh, sponsored Dead End, Dead End skates. Dead End. Okay, Vinny yeah. Rafa, New Jersey legend. Vinny yeah. Rafa. Yo, his stickers, you go into any toll booth anywhere. One of those, I mean. Yeah, he used to have stickers with dead end skates. He had stickers yeah. that said, like, I hate Guido. Right. Yeah. I remember the I hate Guido stickers he used to right. have. Right. Yeah. Yep. That's crazy. Wow. So, yeah, that's cool to hear about. I mean, I, I haven't yeah. seen the guy in probably, like I said, over 30 years. I'll say hello for you. If I, I'll see, I'll yeah. see you again. Yeah. I'll see him again. He remembers me. Yeah, I was, you know, I was only young at the time. I was probably, again, I was probably like 12 years old. So, but yeah, I was sponsored. You know, used to travel and stuff like that. And then I, uh, I used to do demos. I used to do demos with uh, there was a pro skater named Jeff Jones, and he was like kind of from my area, and uh, he had this thing called the Jones Brigade. So I used to be on his team. And we used to just go around doing that and shit. And then uh, he turned out to be a fucking dick. So, yeah. <laughs> hey, what? Uh, so uh, this is uh, 1994. Is this is this is this the after the skate thing or uh, like uh, before? Uh, right, the chaotic discharge era. That was probably the beginning of the end for me. That yeah, that was uh, <laughs> yeah. I think I was 18 there, uh, 17 or 18. Tompkins Square Park. I got wow. kicked out of high school. I got kicked out of high school. And I was like, fuck it. I went to Philly, ended up in squats, and then uh, ended up in New York. Squat, and the squat got raided by police. I filled it up with like you concrete. Were living, you, were living in a, you were living in, you lived in a squat in New York? Yeah, yeah, I think it was wow. near like, yeah, Broom Street, like near to like Chinatown or something. Wow. Yeah, and then uh, the police came and like fucking surrounded the place. They had like mega boats telling us to get out. And then, they, yeah, it was a place called Swamp Squat. There you go, Swamp Squat. Uh, uh, Swamp Squat. Yeah. Chucky Swamp Brown, Squat. Chucky Brown fucking nailed it. No. Wow. Yeah, yeah, that, that's exactly the one, Swamp Squat. And, uh, yep. Yeah, it was it was called that because the only way into it was an old community building, and the only way to get in was through the basement, and the basement was like filled with like two feet of water. Wow! And it was lined up with milk crates. Like you had to walk across the building, like to get up inside the building, you had to to walk across. But it was filled with water, so we had like milk crates lined up. So we walk across these milk crates. It was, you know, it was a fucking nightmare at nighttime when you come back. There fucked up and it's pitch black and there's fucking gnats and rats in wow. there. You know, we didn't have we didn't have fucking you know cell phones to fucking light the way. So hey, we're trying to like balance yeah we're balancing on these milk crates just to get back up in the building and then uh yeah finally the police raided the place and uh filled filled the entrance up with concrete so after that they didn't really have anywhere to go so it was just like sleeping in the doorway sleeping in the park but then they put the curfew on the park. I think it was actually on the news when they had the riots, the Tompkins Square Park riots. It was on the news. And because uh, I, I had just left and so I got kicked out of high school. No, nobody knew where I went. Yeah, I just fucking disappeared. Even my parents, they didn't know where I was. And then uh, next thing I turned up on the six o'clock news, I was like, fucking, I think I smoked a bag of Crazy Eddie the night before. I had no sleep. I was sitting against like uh, there was like a little bodega or something uh, across from the park, Avenue Way. Yeah, of course. Yeah, that was us. So I was just like sat against the fucking you know those things that they shut down, and uh, that's how like everybody found out where I was. Everybody was saying, "Oh, JJ's fucking dead," you know what I mean? Because I was missing. And uh, yeah, that was on the six o'clock news. Big floppy fucking mohawk. <laughs> hey, here's, uh, here's, here's one of your uh, your old Jersey pals uh, checking in, uh, right? Rap bones, Pugsy. Pugsy, Pugsy yeah, yeah, there yeah. he is. 
we all, uh, social decay and that yes. was uh yeah that was the early days that was like the early days when we were going to you know my first shows and stuff was like social decay lethal aggression and uh it was like whole shows we used to go, like holes and BFWs and stuff. Did you catch the uh, think, the bands at the uh, roller drum with Leaf Legression, the brick roller drum? Were you at that? That was pretty. I much. don't think no. I don't think I was at that. that I, was, I remember something in Point Pleasant though. Uh, and I, and I, I know you were there. I remember you were there because I, I can remember you fucking floating over the crowds. Yeah, that's yeah. when the shows were in like the first yeah. garage and stuff, right? The Loop I Lounge. Was like, Is that by you? The Loop Lounge. Mm, I, I remember the name. I don't. I don't know. That, I think that was North. I think. That oh, was, was that? Si Did you guys ever go to City Gardens when you were growing up? Oh yeah, yeah. That was. Yeah, I was that gonna say like my my first shows were like VFW and shit like that, and then I, you know, then City Gardens, the fucking Ramones playing every other week. You know, the Ramones were always fucking playing. He, he took it for granted back then. You know, now it would be cool to see the Ramones. But it was like, fuck, you know, what are we going to do this weekend? Are we going to watch? It's like, oh, we can go watch the Ramones. You know, always playing somewhere. Um, yeah, I remember seeing Seven Seconds. Bouncing Souls was still involved. You know, City Gardens. Yeah. Here's another shot of you from, what is this, from like 93. Uh, yeah, that was I don't the know. pipeline. The pipeline in, in in Newark, New Jersey. In Newark, yeah, that's at the oh. pipeline. That's uh, that's what my friend Otto. He was uh, he sang in a band called Dysfunctional Youth that we used to play with all the time. Great name, yeah. great name, yeah. great name, great name for a bunch for a teenage band. Dysfunctional. Yeah, youth. it's typical, ain't it? You know what I mean? It's kind of one of them typical names. Oh. Uh. Yeah, Otto, man. We used to be, he was a good guy. I think me and him got in trouble with the cops once at a show. I think we were drinking in his van. Fucking police came off. Yeah. <laughs> right. So, so Rappo, so, so you guys, you guys are uh, kind of hanging in Jersey. And, and then, uh, Jeff, you made your way up to Manhattan, which eventually uh, you did as well, uh, Rappo. But uh, have you ever, do you ever go back to Jersey, JJ? Do you have family there? Uh, you have family, family there or anything? Yeah, yeah. You know, my parents are still there. I still got my family over there. Um, I've been over here for 12 years. In 12 years, I think I've been back to the States about three times. You know what I mean? So it's just, uh, and that was mostly like when we're playing or when we're touring or something like that. Because... I can't afford that shit, you know, plane tickets. It ain't fucking cheap, so, you know, if we're on tour or something, it's like, I, I can fucking, you know, stop home, see my parents, and, you know what I mean? But, it's you know, it's nice when I can. You know, I do miss, I, I miss my family, and I do miss everybody, you know. Fucking, it's great, it's great seeing rap here today. Yeah, man. You know, I miss my friends, man. You know, it's been a long oh. time. And, uh, and the longer I'm here, it's just like everything seems to be coming like some distant memory. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's what that's that's what happens, man. You know, it, yeah. it's crazy. What was was the last time you played New York with Discharge when I saw you at at Webster Hall? No, I, I actually I came back one time after that shortly. Uh, yeah, for a week, and that that was just to visit my parents. And uh, we have we have me and my girlfriend Mandy. We had found some cheap flights. We went over there. We flew home, and it was pretty fucking crazy. Because literally the next day after we got back, we flew with Thomas Cook Airlines. And what then the, the day fuck? after what we the got fuck back, is that? I never even heard of that. Yeah, it, it's 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 a fucking British thing, but they they went bankrupt and. Uh, you know, the company fucking went over the day after we got back. Damn. So there was like thousands of people stranded that had flights through Thomas Cook. So we just, you know, we just made it by the skin of our teeth. It, it like, uh, it, uh, it went, it went bankrupt while, while you were on in the air. <laughs> Basically, yeah. 
That's yeah, fucked. we got fucking lucky, man. So that's that's <laughs> fucked up. Hey, uh, hey, Rappo, is anything else for JJ before we move on? Nothing, but I'm really proud of you, brother. Keep the uh, hardcore torch alive, you know, the way you've been doing your whole Dude, life. And uh, this is what we do, you know? It's beautiful to That's see. Right, yeah. uh, I'm actually got a jet today, guys. I got a big job going around the corner. I wanted to definitely make time to say hi to JJ. I wish him all the best. And uh, I'm going to watch on the phone from work, but I got a jet out now and uh, have a great interview. You just scratched the surface just now, so now you guys can dig in, you know? Well, thanks, man. We'll, we'll talk great. to you soon, Rappo. Uh, we'll see you soon. We'll and I know, you I, know, I know you got a bunch of great shit for the next show because I told you to hold off. I, so. do. I do. Hey, and listen. Wait, give, give, us a yo, give, it, yo, give us a sneak peek. Just wave, wave that thing you showed me before. Wave it. What, this? No, no. Oh, no. Sneak peek of this? Yeah. Got new stuff coming. But oh <laughs> it's like it's like what? Spider-Man Spider-Man had the Spidey Mobile. Rap no, has the rap no, before, I, before I go, can I get my pitch in? This yeah, weekend, go ahead. Go ahead. My, this weekend is my big show. 300 Knickerbocker in Bushwick. Second time around is the name of the store. One to eight. All day long. Dealers. Music, food, fun, come on out one to eight this weekend, Saturday the 12th. It's also going to be my birthday party. So come and have a good time. Let's, let's have some fun, all right? And Jeff, I love you, brother. Love you, man. Great to see you. I'm proud of you, man. Yeah, man. And yeah, I'll see you doing well. on the next show. All Let's right? Wrap bones. Later, guys. Well, that was cool, huh? Yeah, that was great, man. Like I said, it's great seeing familiar faces. We miss yeah. everybody. Yeah. I, I think that's 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 great that you guys spent some time growing up together in Jersey. That's that's really that's really something else. Hey, you know, um, I want to show this. Hey, I, I hear you feeding back. Do you have earbuds? Uh, you have earbuds? Plug in your Am I feeding back? You know what? Dig out your earbuds. I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, shout out the sponsors a second, okay? All right, here we go. It's the New York Hardcore Chronicles Live, sponsored by New York Hardcore Comics, the Organic Grill, the Texas Silver Rush, and Chain Reaction Records and Skateboards. Chain Reaction Records and Skateboards, located in Lakewood, Colorado, is the Rocky Mountain headquarters for all things punk, hardcore, and metal. Established in 2014, they have the largest selection of records, CDs, shirts, stickers, patches, and accessories between Chicago and Los Angeles. From the pit to the ditch, they've got your back. Get in touch with them at www.chainreaction.com. Also, the organic grill, the yummy organic grill. And if you've, and if you've been there, you know. We were just eating organic grill food yesterday. It is yummy. Organic Grill is, is a vegan restaurant located in East Village of New York City at 123 First Avenue. 123 First Avenue. Featured in New York Magazine, the New York Times, and Veg News. Their dishes have won numerous awards, including Best Veggie Burger. They make their own cheeses, sausages, and burger patties, and every dish on the menu can be made gluten free. This year, they're celebrating a 20th anniversary, and they're all about having a great time while enjoying amazing, clean food. After three months of being closed and now open for deliveries, get in touch with them and order some great food at www.theorganicgrill.com. Also, uh, what else do we got? Yeah, the Organic Grill rules, bro. We were just eating there, we were just eating there yesterday. Um, what else? Hey, Rosie. Hope you're well, Rosie. How you doing? What else? Let me see. For all you gluten-free. Yep. There you go. Hey, I, I know uh, I want to shout out Upstate Rick. Upstate Rick has uh, created a Facebook page for everybody in the chat room. There it is. Uh, no, that's not it. Uh, where is, do I have that? I don't know if I do. Yo, you got to send me the, the URL for the, uh, for the Facebook page, um, for every, I guess he, he formed the Facebook page for everybody in the chat room for when we're not doing a show. 
and it's got some traction and there's a bunch of people in there already and I'm really flattered. So that's really cool. Uh, Cause I can't do any more than two shows a week. And if you people need to speak to each other, you need to create your own forum. So there you go. Hey, Ori. Whoa, 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 Ori. Ori from Eternal Struggle checking in from Tel Aviv, Israel. What's up, man? Come, we're going to play together, man. We're going to we're, we're come to Israel. Antidote NYHC. We're going to play with you, bro. Um, great crew in that chat room. Yeah. Yep. For sure. That said. Um, what else did I want to mention? Uh, a couple of things real quick uh, before we bring our guest, JJ from Discharge back. And we're going to find out how did this guy from New Jersey end up singing for Broken Bones and then Discharge? Incredible. Inquiring minds want to know. Okay, here, here, here it is. Uh, uh, the, it's the New York Hardcore Chronicles comments crew on Facebook. Go find it. Join it. Yes. Up, shout out for up, to Upstate Rick for doing that. That's really cool. I'm, I'm going to pretty much stay clear of that because it's kind of corny. Like, it's like your thing. So, you guys, if you really need me on there, I, I, I'll come in and say hi. But I'm really, I'm really, I'm really flattered. Um, here, here you go. Here it is www.facebook there's the link cut and come paste it uh mark from uh canada posted it that's where it's happening um great so far well glad you think so rev uh there you go uh what else did i want to mention upcoming shows uh i think we kind of covered all that um oh uh the on the patreon page if you if you're not a patreon one more time uh, with the page with the patreon page uh my my patreons on the on the uh on the ten dollar tier we are gearing up to do the drew stone cinematic and music walking tour of new york so if you're one of the patrons on that page and you want to be involved we're doing it in october for those that are bold i mean we'll practice social distancing on the tour we'll wear masks but uh, the tour does involve a couple subway rides. But we're getting out there in October. A bunch of people want to do it. If, I'm just reminding you, uh, if you are a patron on the Patreon page and you're on the $10 or above tier, we're heading out in October. So go check it out. Drop me a line if you want to be a part of it. It's something we're going to do probably once a, once a month. Um, so that said, Drew already runs a New York Hardcore Facebook, which has some dope stuff. Yeah, it's the New York Hardcore Chronicles page. So if you don't know, if, if you're not, uh, if you're not on the New York Hardcore Chronicles page, five, uh, what is it? Six years into it, I don't know what to tell you. Um, yeah, Keith Bennett, a motherfucker from New Jersey, rocking Sheer Terror Inc., singing for Discharge, love and respect. Absolutely. You know, there you go. Uh, why do I feel like I'm forgetting something? Oh, you know what? I want to also mention, before we get back with our guest, uh, your core, your core um, Facebook page, which just started up. There is the URL for that. Go check that out. Let me get this comment out of here. Um, go check out your core. Um, they just they just put up an interview. With a uh, new band, teenage kids from our A7 crowd, uh, reaching out New Jersey hardcore. They're the kids of some some uh, New York hardcore alumni like Beto, who was in uh, Demise and and um, Madball, and uh, they got some stuff coming up. It's a cool page. Go check it out. That that's the URL underneath. They got Disintegrar. Disintegrar. Am I pronouncing that right? Disintegrar from Argentina. They got some no redeeming social value stuff coming up and brick by brick. So go check that out. I'm shouting them out hard. Your core fan page on Facebook, on Disgracebook. Uh, oh, Louis Gasparro. Louis Gasparro uh, coming in from the cold. What's happening, KR1? Legendary. Legendary. Astoria Queens graffiti artist, KR1. Nice to, nice, nice to hear from you, man. 
you know, I, I know a lot of you are lurking. I know there's a lot of lurkers out there. But, uh, of course, you know, Louis played drums in Blitzbeer. You know, we had um, Phil Caivano on, on recently I I as well. So, so there you go. What's up, man? You got to come on the show one of these days. You know, let me know. Reach out. Reach out, man. I'm here. I'm here. You hear? I hear you. So there you go. Uh, that said, I kind of think, oh, you, oh, your son. Yeah, your son's come down to a couple A7 shows. Yeah, man. Good. Good. It's a family. It's a family affair. It's a family affair. Yeah, Louis played in Murphy's Law too. That's right. And and um and uh what's it? Um from Brooklyn, the Lords. Lords of Lords of what was it? Lords of not Lords of the Underground. Uh the Lords. Um so that said, let's bring our guests back on. Let me get rid and yo, sign up for the Patreon thing. What's wrong with you if you haven't? Come on now. Let's go. Let's go. Lords of Brooklyn. I'm sorry. Lords of Brooklyn. Sly Stone, not Drew Stone. That's right. Wanna take you higher. Baby, 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 take you higher. Yeah. What's up, Funicula? There you go. That's Funicula. That's his Your Core page. Support them. All right. Enough. Enough, enough, enough. Let me clear the deck here. Get rid of all this bullshit. Let's get our guests back on. JJ, you with us? Physically. Oh, yeah, good. <laughs> the earbuds are good. The earbuds help. Earbuds. So, better? Let's, let's get down, man. So, okay. let's, uh, so the, the, uh, let, let's, we'll, we'll, move, we'll move quick. But the next band you were in was Dead Heroes, correct? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and that was a, that was, a, that was a New Jersey band. Yeah, that was a, yeah, that was New Jersey. I had just gotten uh, sent down from the bed. Tell I us did about a bit it. Of time. Yeah, well, I got in trouble basically, and uh, went away for a while, and uh, come out needed something to keep me going, and uh, that was Dead Heroes. You know, that was when I first kind of found this internet thing. Because before that, you know, didn't know shit about computers or anything. It was when the internet was just like, you know, I think like early 2000s or something. Uh, I was new to the whole thing. And uh, I met somebody online and we started talking. We became friends. And uh, like I said, I was a drummer. I never sang before. And uh, this guy started talking. He was singing for his band. I was like, fuck it, I'll do it. Never sang before, but I'll do it. And that was Dead Heroes. And uh, it was funny, man, because I was like on this program called ISP, which was like a strict form of parole. And I had a curfew. So I used to have to like convince my ISP officer to let me like stay out later to do like, <laughs> shows and shit like that. And he, he was cool, though. He used to let me do it. You know, as long as I just kept my shit together. So, so you went yeah. from being a drummer to a singer, huh? Yeah, just like that. Never sang, but I was like, fuck it, you know, I just did it. And uh, it was a learning curve, you know. I think I pushed it a bit too much in the beginning. I uh, en ended up losing my voice all the time, but you find that kind of zone. So, yeah, so 10 years went on for... Uh, I'd say, I think we started like, two, I want to say like 2002. And then it went on probably, probably right up until I moved to the UK, which was like 2007 or 2008. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it was Dead Heroes. I mean, we did the rounds. We played, you know, a lot of good shows. And, you know, we you know I, I, listened, I, listened to, I listened to Dead Heroes um, this morning. And, and I must say, I, I, I rather enjoyed it, man. I, I made it through all the stuff. It... it, it uh, you know, I, I have a short, I have a short attention span, you know, uh, it, it's, especially when it comes to music, you know, it, it, these days, you know, it, yeah. it's, sort of, it's sort of in the pores of my skin. Like I live it and breathe it. It's hard yeah. for me to sit and listen to some, but yo, I, I listen to, 
I listened to the whole thing that was up and really enjoyed it, man. It, it was, it, it was, uh, I could see, I could see from, from the, from dead heroes, how like, um, broken bones, like how those, those guys would, would hear that and kind of go, Oh, okay. Yeah, it's, you know, same vocal style, really, isn't it? You know, yeah. As far as discharge goes, anyways, you know. Yep, same, yep. Same vocal style. Um, I mean, with Dead Heroes, there was, there was a lot of different influences, you know, within the band. You know, I was in several, you know, the hard and heavy stuff at the time. And then uh, the other guys were, you know, kind of into, I think, Johnny. What's up, Johnny, if you're out there? Uh, Johnny G was listening to like a lot of, uh, I think like German punk and stuff like bands like Ask the Cask and Public Toys. He was into stuff like that. So there was a lot of different kind of influences in that band. Um, so we just kind of came to this like mutual thing. So yeah, it, you know, it was, it was kind of hard to say. Like, you know, people tried to stick us in a category. And it was like, is it hardcore? Is it, you know, is it punk? Is it, you know, is it? But who gives a shit? You know what I mean? It's the same with discharge. People are like, is it punk? Is it metal? Who fucking yeah. cares? It doesn't need to be pigeonholed. You know, it, yep. it doesn't need to be. It doesn't need a fucking category. It's just, it is what it is. Either you fucking like it or you don't. It's that simple. Yep. You know? Yep. And yep. Uh, yeah, with, with Dead Heroes, I mean, it, it was crazy, man. Dead Heroes was fucking. We were we were out of control. We were. Oh, oh wait, you know what? I, I gotta I gotta put up the infamous picture. Hold on, I gotta <laughs> I gotta find the infamous. Where the hell is the infamous? Ah, here you go. I found it. The infamous, and we found out who took the picture today too, right? That's right. Yeah, I don't there you go. remember that at all. Right. <laughs> Hold on. You know what? So, so wait, before we bring on the guy who took the picture, yeah. what was what was going on? I, and, and I got to say, uh, what, what was going on here? Explain. That's actually my old car in the background, that, that station <laughs> wagon. There. Yeah. It was this 1969 Buick special. I wish I still had that car. It was rare. And, wow. Uh, yes. I think there was like 2,000 men in that car. But anyway. It, it was some gig that we played in the middle of fucking nowhere. I, think, I want to say Farmingdale, New Jersey. Oof, but I could be. Uh, yeah, I could be wrong. It was in the middle of nowhere. So again, it was like some like little hole, and uh, we were just outside drinking. You know, you can see. Hey, let's uh, let's looks bring like on. Budweiser. Let's bring on the uh, the photographer of this photo. All right. All right. There he is. DJ C. Yeah, it turns out the you, you took this photo, huh? What a really shitty uh, digital camera that I had at the time. <laughs> we, had to, we were drinking. You know, punks are going to do stupid shit. And lo and behold, fireworks and beer equals this photo. P punks, yeah. are gonna go, punks are going to do stupid shit like what? Like shoot bottle rockets out of their assholes? <laughs> yeah. You know? Because I think I believe it or not, I think I actually even dared JJ to do it. And he's like, "Oh fuck it," and I'm like, wait, 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 wait. "As I'm trying to get the vertical flash, one of the the embers or one of the parts of the of the firework went up his butthole." And he, like, you, I wish I, this, the video would have been better because he jumped at least a good two feet in the air. Where was it, Sid? This was in Jersey. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I can't remember specifically where. It's in the middle of Jersey, like I said, in the middle of Bumblefuck, New Jersey. But it was like, yeah. what I could honestly remember, on they played, and, they, and they were, it was a good set. I don't really remember who else played. but You know what no, I love? I don't either, yeah. JJ, you know what I love? I love the guys. I love the Jersey guys standing around in the background with their with their hands in their fucking pockets playing yeah. pocket hey, ball, oh, hey, oh. watching the freak show. <laughs> we didn't give a fuck though. Like, yeah, we're not that yeah. fucked up to do this. Yeah, you know? that was, that's that's how Dead Heroes. It was shit like this all the time with Dead Heroes. It was a fucking great time in that band. 
Uh, but a lot of people didn't want to fucking book us most of the time because we, we just had a bad reputation. Right. Like troublemakers, you know what I mean? And uh, yeah, that's that the guy lighting the, the bottle rocket hanging out of my ass. That's Johnny, <laughs> the Johnny G, the oh, guitar Johnny player. G, yeah, oh, yeah, because Johnny was a lot skinnier and he had way less hair back then, too. <laughs> is, is, um, you know, everybody, uh, has there ever been any thought about doing a little uh, Dead Heroes reunion? No, not really, no. no. <laughs> yeah, maybe someday, you know, not at this point, but eventually. It would be I also, fun. I wouldn't I say also, no. I also love how it's spelled heroes like a hero sandwich. Like it's yeah. like a yeah, the dead. I, I, I love it. It's like it's yeah. we're not dead heroes like a hero in the war. We're like a hero sandwich. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, that's right. It, you know what it was? I think at the time, because we, we started this band, Dead Heroes, and then uh, another band called The Dead Heroes messaged us. And they're like, what the fuck, guys? You stole our name. You know, they said you stole our name. And uh, how dare you call yourselves, you know, dead heroes? You know, we wouldn't go name our band Metallica. And it's like, well, who the fuck are you? I've never heard of you. You know what I mean? How the fuck are we supposed to know? You know, fuck you. And they had this, uh, I think I think it was, uh, they had like cease and desist letters sent to us or something. But they're like, fuck these guys. So we just dropped the E out of my name. So, yeah, we basically went from being dead heroes to, to dead sex. The dead gyros, the dead hoagies. <laughs> yeah. And of course, some of our people, punk as fuck. That's like, that's <laughs> punk, punk, as, punk as fuck. That, the, the, yeah. the, dead, the dead gyros. There you go. The gyros, yeah. yeah. I, don't mind. I haven't had a gyro. Oh, you yet. know what? You know what they call it in Connecticut? Uh, a grinder. Like a hero sandwich is a grinder. Like a the grinder. dead gr with the dead grinders. You know? How about dead, dead hoagies. The dead hoagies. <laughs> that'll, be, that'll be the spoof of the dead heroes, like a cover band. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, what, do you, what do you say, you guys? We do. Um, oh, no, here you go. Before, how about Chris Corkum says, we're, 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 we're the new dead heroes. Oh, <laughs> the new dead. Yeah. Yeah. The, the that would have worked. Heroes. Yeah. That would have worked. But uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, the funny thing is, in the end, I think that band that sent us like these threatening messages and that they were like offended that we didn't know who they were. Um, they were the ones that ended up changing their name anyway. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, so, of course. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Fun. Yeah. Uh, grinders is a very New England phrase. Yeah. As a kid, oh, I, I went to summer camp in Connecticut, which is New England, and the, the pizza place there. It was called a grinder. We're like, what's a grinder? You know, but I, I, it's like yeah. it's like a it's a hero sandwich. Anyway, um, oh, oh, here you go. How about the Dead Heroes J M or Dead Heroes N Y A C? Very funny, get Metal Gabe. No, it would, yeah. it would be Dead Heroes J J. That's how it would go. Right. Yep. Dead Heroes hey, N J. Hey, what do you say? Uh, what do you say, you guys? Uh, let's do let's do record of the week together, and. Yeah, um, one week, what a shot, guys! What's that? Said it was so good, I had to do it twice this week. What's today? Oh, today's Wednesday, right? Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, listen. Uh, I see what you sent me, and and I know this influenced all of us here. So, Sid, here we go. Uh, we got JJ with us. This is record of the week. What's up? Boom, motherfucker. Well, yeah. all right. Go ahead, Sid. Talk about this, and then me and JJ will give our two cents. Alrighty, guys. Well, when you think punk rock was, you know, in the late 1970s, what do you usually think of when you hear about 70s punk rock? Sex Pistols, The Clash, in many people's eyes, and in the mainstream, and me to consider it dead. Even the second set Vicious dropped dead. But this album was a humongous fuck you to all that nonsense. Even though this came out, I believe, uh, two years after Sid's death, this record just fucking, it just hit, and it hit fucking hard. Uh, Punk's Not Dead was recorded and released in 1981 by Secret Records. Uh, Gary Bushel, this was Gary Bushel's label at the time, uh, who also went to be a, a writer for The Sun. Uh, this 15 LP track just basically cuts through any naysayer saying that well, punk is a phase, blah, 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 and all this other bullshit. Um, 
uh, I believe uh, Dave Lepper uh, produced this album, if I'm not mistaken. And for it being a first album, you know, you could just hear the rawness and intensity of this fucking band. They had, I believe, two, well, three or four singles prior to this being their first release. And they're one of the few bands, even prior to the pandemic, never broke up, never did a reunion. 41 years later, they're still fucking playing. They, up to this, they were still touring and they can make a living off this off punk rock but you know it's their life they live this shit you know and and i believe also even when the album dropped i believe in uh, 1981 it peaked at number 20 on the uk charts and later that year they ended up being the top selling uh 1981 independent uk release as well right on hey jj uh you're friends with these guys right you 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 you, you cross paths i mean was it was did this yeah. record resonate did this record resonate with you as a teenager um, I loved the Exploited when I was a teenager, and, and you know what? When I, you know, in my early days of like getting into punk, they were probably one of my favorite bands. Uh, however, not this record. Um, I do love this record for what it is, but uh, I think for me personally, I loved uh, my Troops of Mars and that started war, but and that's probably what I discovered first, and then I found the Punk's Not Dead album, and it was, you know. It, it was weird because it wasn't as hard as what I originally heard to be exploited, you know what I mean? But I did like it for what it was, you know what I mean? So, um, I mean, for me personally, you know, it wasn't like one of the influential records for me. Um, it, it, it is a great record, you know, I love listening to it. Um, but I did always prefer, yeah, like Troops and all that stuff and stuff like that. Um, yeah, yeah, actually, yeah. Uh, on a side note of this, guys, believe it or not, the original of uh, the bass player, Gary McCormick, who was in the band from 1980 to 1983, ended up becoming an actor like 15 or so years later. And he ended up, yeah. uh, Gary McCormick is actually in Gangs in New York. He's known for that yeah. film, and I believe uh, Viking Valhalla, I think that's what it's called. And of course, what, Val, down, the film Valhalla. Yeah, that's that's what he's known for. He's known for that. But see, I wait, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. He's not the actor in Valhalla. No, no, he's he? no, no, no. It's called Val, no, sorry, Valhalla Rising. That's what it's called. Yeah, I've seen it. It's a, it's an incredible film. It, it, he he's credited to being in that movie. I don't know about a big role, but he's in the movie though. Wow, that that film Valhalla is a very very disturbing film. Oh, it's it, well, it's a really incredibly shot in a very disturbing film i i i highly recommend it to anybody it's called valhalla rising there's barely any talking in it i think it's shot on location in norway i think it's a very disturbing film it, it's it's like um i think they're vikings or something it's yeah there's, there's not a lot of talking in it and it's a very uh visual disturbing film it, it's i highly recommend it yeah, but like, you know, even when one of my friends was like, oh, dude, one of the guys from the exploited is in Gangs in New York. And of course, you know, back then, even though there was internet, I thought he was talking shit. I had to watch it a few times and I kept looking at him. And of course, you know, sh you know, shaved head, didn't recognize him. But when I kind of did the comparison, I'm like, oh, shit, that is Gary. So I'm like, I mean, I'm proud of him. He's one of those underrated punk bass players that no, not a lot of people give credit to. Yeah, especially those three exploited albums that he was on was very basic when it comes to bass playing, but it's, you know, he's got good punch and crunch to, to what he plays. And it's, you know, good shit, especially because he was one of the co-writers next to big John with a lot of that material for those first three records. Yeah. All right. I just looked it up. What's his name? What's his name again? Gary McCormack. Oh, I'm looking at the cast. Um, if you look on gangs in New York, he's, he's listed on there. Gary Lewis? No. no, no, no. Oh, Gary. Gary McCormick. Gary McCormick as the Lost Viking. Wow. Yeah. Yo, this film here. Wait, here. I, I, I'll put the. Uh, let me. Uh, I'll, I'll show everybody what the film is. I'm talking about here. Listen, you know, if I'm if I'm pushing a film, if I'm pushing a film this hard, I really liked it, man. Yeah. Um. So here, here it is. Hold on. Yeah, if, if, if we happen to get Wadi on the show, Drew, somebody's oh, gonna it's, have it's, to it's a little small there. It's called Valhalla. It's called Valhalla Rising. 
Yeah, if we happen to get Wadi on the show, we definitely got to get an interpreter because no one's going to understand him. No. Yeah, that's the other thing. If that's I get true. Wadi on the show, I've talked to Wadi. I don't understand what the fuck he's talking about. Surprisingly, I do. Don't don't ask me why, but I do. Yep. Hey, so all right, Sid. Good work, man. All right, no worries, guys. I'll talk to you soon. All right, and Jeff, thank you, thank you for coming on the show, man. It was awesome. Yeah, man. It's great to see you, bro. All righty, cheers. All right. All right, so uh, so there you go. We got past. We 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 survived that. Um, so all right, let's get let's let's get down to brass tacks. So dead heroes. How the hell did you connect with these guys and end up in broken bones? How did that happen? Um, well, like like I said, I moved to Stoke on Trent. Same oh, so same you moved, town. So you, moved, so, so you moved from Jersey. I'm out of here, and you moved to Stoke on Trent. Yeah, pretty much. My ex-wife, I mean, I'm divorced now. Uh, my ex-wife was from Stoke, so I ended up over here. And uh, it's the same town that, you know, Broken Bones discharged. But when I came over here, I started playing in a band called Wasted Life. And I played in this band. I was singing with Wasted Life for about five ah. years. And uh, we, did a, we did a show with Discharge. We were like the opening band of Discharge. And uh, I knew Rainy's sister, Jane. And then after, we, yeah. What's, after, what's, after, what's Rainy's sister's name? Jane. I thought it was Janie. J Rainy's no, sister, Janie. Jane. <laughs> <laughs> no, just Jane, right. not Jane. But uh, yeah, so we, we played with Discharge, and then I think it was after the show, and what I missed, she said, uh, she says, oh, Rainy. And wants you to contact me, wants to work with you. So I thought, you know, cool. You know, didn't say discharge or anything like that. It's just, you know, really wants to get in touch with you, wants to work with you. So I thought, oh, cool, you know, new nice. side project. Yeah, new side project, something like that. Right. And uh, nothing about, like I said, nothing about discharge. And tried getting in touch. It just didn't fucking work out. Couldn't get in right. touch with them, basically. So fast forward, probably a couple of years later, there's all this talk about Broken Bones reforming with Nobby. And uh, I was like, cool, you know, bro the original Broken Bones getting back together. Like, I would love to have seen that. And Nobby was, I think Nobby was like going to try to come back over here or something like that. And there was all this talk. Because uh, at, th at this point, I was hanging out with Tez a lot. And uh, I think it was Tez's idea to get Broken Bones back together. So, you know, Nobby was supposed to come back into the band and, and all that. And basically, one day, Tez says to me, he says, oh, you know, he says, if it don't work out, work out with Nobby. He says, would you be up for singing for Broken Bones? So I was like, well, I have to think about it. You know what I mean? Because, uh, Broken bone style. It, it wasn't my style of singing. Like I said, you heard of that here. It's like my style is kind of that gruff discharge vocal. Yeah. Broken bones. So I said, I think. Next thing, you know, it's everywhere. Fucking new singer Jeff Janik. I was like, what the fuck? Ah, what the fuck? Ah. <laughs> you know, it was all over the internet. Broken bones. New singer Jeff Janik. I was like, fuck. You know, yeah, I didn't really, you know, I wanted to see Nobby singing with Broken Bones. But uh, I ended up doing it. I was like, you know, fuck it. I'll give it a go. How, you know, how bad could it be? And uh, I did it. You know what I mean? It, it, it was a learning curve for me because I, because uh, it was a different style of singing for me. So I had to like learn how to tame down my vocals, which was pretty cool, actually, doing something different. And uh, so, yeah, we did that lineup. We toured, uh, did some great fucking shows, like in Europe, you know, played in squats and stuff like that. And uh, we recorded an EP. And then, uh, yeah, so the next thing, you know, I'm in Broken Bones. And then. Uh, how, how long did that go on for? A couple of years? Yeah, I'd say a couple of years, but it was funny because after I joined Broken Bones, I heard Rainey was upset with me because he wanted me to sing for Discharge. <laughs> I was like, 
what? I was like, are you fucking serious? Like, because there was never any mention of me singing for Discharge. You know? Now, now if they wanted, wanted you to sing for Discharge, would that have been before Rat stepped in? No, Rat was singing at the time. Yeah, yeah Rat, mm -hmm. Rat was singing at the time. Like I said, I, I never would have thought it would have been Discharge because as far as I knew, Rat was singing. Everything was fucking, you know, happy. Yeah. Uh -huh. But no, apparently Rainy, you know, and this was four years before I joined Broken Bones that Rainy wanted me, apparently for discharge. So, uh, yeah, I heard he wasn't, you know, he wasn't very happy when he joined Broken Bones. But then I, I guess whatever happened with, you know, Rat and the guys and discharge, uh, you know, I was pretty sure I was going to get the phone call, like, you know, asking if I would sing for discharge. So, uh, I said, I'll, you know, I'll do the shows that I've booked with this show, so I'll do it and see how it goes, you know. And if it goes well, I'll stay with it. If not, I'll fucking I'll piss off, you know. Simple, so it went pretty well. And uh, I'm still here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, obviously, yeah, here you go. I mean, you guys... Uh, yeah, I mean, I gotta say, man, discharge is great these days, man. I mean, uh, no dis, no disrespect to Rat, you know, from the Verukers. Yeah. I mean, he yeah. was cool. I love Rat. He's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. no disrespect at all to Rat. He was great in his own right. But man, I love you singing for Discharge. You, 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 it just, it really, really, really to me. This is this Thank is. Thank you. This is me talking, motherfuckers, right here. Yeah. Is that for Thank me? You feels really like discharge and it feels good man yeah i, I love it man it, it, it was natural for me you know what i mean like i said like the the way i've always sang my natural vocals yeah like, you know just the discharge style you know what i mean and uh like i said at that point after i got into after i moved to stoke is when i started actually getting more into discharge you know what i mean so yeah, it just fucking went for it, you know what I mean? And that was that. And, uh, the rest is history. It just worked out, you know? Yeah, and, and you guys, I mean, you guys have been doing a lot of work these past couple years, right? I mean, you put that record out, you know, you guys are on Nuclear uh, on nuclear Blast, right? And Yeah, that's I mean, you, right. Yeah, you guys really put in some work these past couple years, right? Yeah, we, we, we played a lot. You know what I mean? We put we put out that record in 2016, and uh, we were just fucking playing nonstop. You know what I mean? Tours and, and what have you. Uh, so it's just nonstop. We, we, you know, we should have had another record out. To be fair, you know, because that was what four, six years? No, 2016. Four years ago, we put out that record. But uh, we've just been that busy playing live. You know, we haven't really had time to fucking work on new stuff. I mean, we, you know, we have to have rehearsals trying some things out. If, it's, if it ain't right, it ain't right. You know what I mean? It's got to be fucking solid, you know? Um, but I spoke to Bones the other day, actually. And, uh, you know, he said he's missing it. Bones is really missing playing. And, uh, I said, you know, let's fucking get working on some new shit then. You know what I mean? Now's the fucking time. Because since this, since this lockdown, I mean, I've, I've been busy as shit since this lockdown, working on new music. I've done quite a bit. Um, so, you know, Discharge will be next. I mean, so with this lockdown, I formed a whole new fucking band. Um, a whole new project. With, uh, I don't want to tell too much about it, but... Uh, you know, I'm working with Stig out of Amoebics and uh, Roy Mayorga from Nausea Stone Sour. And it, it's, you know, it's been cool. It's just, it's just weird because it's a whole different experience. Uh, everything now is like this file sharing thing. And we're like, we're all recording from home. We're all doing shit from home. So it's like, you know, my whole life, you know, for since I've been playing music, I've been going into studios and that. And it's like since it's locked down, I'm doing vocals in my fucking right here in my living room. And uh, I've done quite a few projects, and it is quite funny. Um, 
It was right at the beginning of this lockdown. A buddy of mine named Perry, and I think I think he's watching right now. So what's up, Perry? Um, <laughs> from mental abuse. Do you remember mental abuse? Yes, of course, of course. Yeah, and uh, I think he played in a band called Clench Fists. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. He he got in touch with me because he's got a new project that he's doing, like a solo type thing called Star Control. And he's like, JJ, this is. Uh, you know, when you do vocals on this song for me, he says, I got this song. I'm like, yeah. I said, but how the fuck am I going to do it? You know, maybe lock down here. We're in the middle, we're in the middle of a fucking, we're, we're in a fucking pandemic. You know, everything's shut. I can't yeah. get to a studio. I can't go to a studio. Like, uh, what the fuck do you want me to do? So he says, uh, no, he's like, that's, he says, it's fine. He says, just get your phone. He says, and, and just sing into the voice recorder. Nice. Yeah. So I was like, like, you know, it's like when HR did uh, the vocals for Sacred Love uh, from, J from remember, remember that? I mean, yeah. I, I think I think he was locked up. Yeah, he was locked up. I might have been in Jersey. And he he, he phoned in the book, Sacred Love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so it was exactly like that. Yeah. So I, I did these, yeah, I did these like ridiculous lyrics. I mean, we had this joke about this fucking blower. Me and him have a lot of laughs. And uh, we have this joke about a blow up doll, which actually turned out to be like a pretty dark sounding song about like, you know, having this love affair with a blow up doll. It's it pretty, it's really fun. You know, we had fun doing it. And then, uh, and then from there, like I said, I started this new band that I'm working on. And then I ended up like trying to do this shit properly. You know, downloading this like home recording studio stuff, and uh, so I've been doing that. And then uh, guys from the English Dogs, uh, there's a band called Unholy Alliance, and it's basically there's like kind of two versions of the English Dogs going around. There's, there's like the metal version, and then you got the punk version. So Unholy Alliance mm -hmm. is like members from the the punk version and the metal version. And uh, the singer got in touch with me, and he says, uh, he's like, we do some vocals on this track. He's like, we got this track, like, you know, to release it, this and that. But, you know, he, he says he wanted, like, a kind of harder vocal on the chorus. So I was like, yeah, you know, I'm concerned, you know what I mean? What, what have I got know, to lose? I ain't doing nothing else. Uh... Here's a friend of ours, Michael Alago, who I did the film about once, is saying a quick hello. Oh, yeah? Yeah. yeah. Who, is, who is that guy? Who is, tell me, who is that guy? <laughs> hey, funny funny you should ask. If you have... Yeah, who is ask, that guy? If, if you're out there and you have Netflix, uh, if you're out there and you have Netflix, just a quick reminder, watch my fucking film. Who the fuck is that guy? Yeah. The Fabulous Journey of Michael Alago. If you have Amazon Prime, watch the New York Hardcore Chronicles film. Uh, all XXX, all ages, XXX, uh, the Boston hardcore film, or on regular Amazon is the New York Hardcore Chronicles 1.5. Sorry, I had to throw a plug in there, but Michael Alago, we love you, man. Absolutely. Hey, uh, yeah, that, this, that, that was a good documentary, man. I did watch that over here. Yeah. Thank you, man. I watched it. Yeah, it was great. Proud of, proud of that film. Proud of that film. Should be. Yeah. Um, let me, uh, I want to ask you about this a second. Uh, let me find, where is that great photo that I had up before? Hold on. I got to find it again. Is it gone? Oh, I got to find this photo. I, ha I had it up a second. Hold on. Cause it's, cause it's perfect. I, I got, I got to ask you about it. Hold on. I'll find it. Oh, here it is. All right. Fear not. Here we go. All right, this photo here, I got to say, here we go. This photo, right? Yeah. Do you, all right, so I got to say this about Discharge. Discharge looks hard as fuck, bro. In, in this photo, like, you guys look like something out of, like, like you, you guys look like Discharge. Like, if I thought of the band Discharge, like, this is what this chart should look like, man. It's like something out of The Walking Dead. It's like something out of like uh, uh, you guys came out of the apocalypse. But you know, <laughs> but the, the one thing I love about this charge, uh, 
the guy on the far right is that is that Tez on the right who plays the flying V? No, the far right with uh with the beard. That's Rainy, the bass player. No, the other Tez, one, Tez. Not, not, with, not not with the beard on the other side. Yeah, the, with the beard, the beard, yeah. beard. Okay. Yeah, that's Ra on the that's other Rainy. side. Yeah, Rainy with the moppy hair. Yeah. Okay, I'll say this about Rainy. Okay, do you know who Ted Kaczynski is? The Unabomber. I remember. Will, the I've, yes, I've told him that before. Hold and on, I, hold on. You, I got yeah. a picture. I got a picture, bro, right here, yeah. man. You have in your band, and I know you don't want to tell us, but somehow you got this guy out of his life imprisonment so he That's could right. play. So, so <laughs> <laughs> no, that, that is right. Yeah, R Rainy. Uh, he disappeared. He, he was living in Copenhagen, so. <laughs> We we uh, broke the Unabomber out of the jail and, and taught him how to play the bass and got oh, him to join this charge. So yeah, it's uh, it's Rainy's twin. And yeah, Rainy's I, fucking great, man. I, I fucking love Rainy. Rainy's he's an amazing guy. Rain, Rainy's one of them people that like you know, me. You know, he's just. He's just like this bank of fucking knowledge. You know what I mean? He just knows so much about like everything. He's an amazing guy. He's like just truly eccentric. I love him. I love the guy. Now, now, another interesting thing about Discharge that a lot of people may not know is there are two brothers in the band, and you're in a band with two brothers. <laughs> that, must yeah. be, that must be a lot of fun, bro. <laughs> No, it's fucking nuts. <laughs> yeah, every fucking show we play on the way home, you think there's gonna be a brawl with a fucking man with them too. <laughs> Taz and Bone, yeah, in the middle in the middle of the photo there. There's Bones and Taz. Bones on the left, Taz on the right. But uh yeah, it's the, the typical brothers, you know, just fucking always ready to beat the shit out of each other and that's how it goes. <laughs> Hey, yeah, yeah. I, I, I couldn't imagine being in a band with my brother, man. I'd go fucking nuts, you know? Yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd, I'd go nuts. Hey, so let's do this. I love, yeah, I, I don't know. I guess I, I was looking at photos today and I was like, that guy looks like the Unabomber. What's up with that? Yeah, <laughs> I know. I, I've always thought it's funny you said that, man, because I've always thought that too. Is that like right? Unabomber. This is uh, this is our, our friend Frankie, to, uh, Frankie Too Far. Um, did Tez yeah, what's up, Frank? I know Frank from back in the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, this is Frank. This is Frankie. Uh, Frankie from Step Too Far. Uh, yeah. One of my, my one of my favorite DJs in New York. Um, yeah. Did Tez play? He says Tez played in Ministry. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Um, Tez Tez moved to America for a bit. Ah, he was living in Chicago. And then, yeah, he ended up joining ministry, but then he got kicked out because he lit, I think he lit the tour bus on fire. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Nice. They, they like shot, uh, they lit fireworks on the bus. And I think, if I remember correctly, I think, you know, they, they lit off some fireworks in the bus and then the whole tour bus caught fire. So they, oh, wait, know, they wait, wait, wait a second. But I don't understand because that got him thrown out of ministry. I mean, it seems like yeah. that's what ministry does all the time anyway. <laughs> yeah, I think they basically said, you know, either you pay for the fucking bus or you're gone. So I think it just, like, fucked off. Wow. Hey, let's yeah. do this. Uh, let me let me shout out a couple sponsors, and then we'll come back, and let's take some questions from people Good, around the I, world. I need a piss. I need a piss really Go bad. ahead. Go take a piss. You got all five right. minutes. Go take a piss. This is the New York Hardcore Chronicles Live, the piss episode, uh, <laughs> with JJ from, from Discharge. We make sure I, I got everybody shouted out here. Uh, New York Hardcore Comics, The Organic Grill, Texas, the Texas Silver Rush, the Texas Silver Rush, Chain Reaction Records and Skateboards, and Your Core Hardcore fan page on Facebook. Hope everybody's well. We're going to do questions next, so... Anybody got questions for JJ from Discharge? Please post them up. Post them up. Let's do it. Uh, what am I forgetting? Why do I feel like I'm forgetting something? Um, everybody else, everybody, the pistory. Yes, this is the pistory 
of discharge. Uh, well, thank you. I'm doing great. The show is great. All right. Thank you. All right. There you go. Um, anybody? Hey, May, how you doing? How's things in London, May? Um, there you go. All right. So any questions, you know, post up now and we'll get him. We'll get him when he comes in, you know, we'll get him when he comes back. Punch back. Uh, that said, uh, just a couple of reminders. Uh, this is a big one here. Um, coming up this Sunday is the Bowery Electric streaming show. It is a Sunday matinee on the Bowery show. Tickets are available at www. TheBoweryElectric.com. The bands that are performing for your visual and audio pleasure are Stigma, featuring Vinny Stigma, Mike Gallo, Larry the Hunter, Luke on Drums, Antidote with Tristan DeGraves, and Mac Gray, special guest Tom Capone from Quicksand and Beyond. And of course, the, everybody's favorite punk and drinking band, The Craze. Please buy a ticket and support this show. This is to support Save Our Stages and to support venues in New York City. We are giving everything from this show to the venues. So please support this show. We are going out of pocket, so to speak, to play this show. And we are okay with it. This is our gesture to the venues in New York City. So please, we're supporting them. You should support them. Buy a ticket. Buy the ticket, take the ride. All right? That said, uh, also, this, this Sunday, I mixed up what day it is. This Sunday coming up, leading into that show, the live streaming show is, our guest will be, Craig Silverman from Agnostic Front and Slapshot. He also played an only living witness in American War Machine. So this Sunday, Craig Silverman. And then I scurry down to the Bowery Electric and we do the live streaming event. It's going to be a lot of fun. I hope you can tune in. Also, the, uh, the show, the live streaming show is going to be up for viewing for a week. So if you can't watch it live, you could still watch it for a week. So there you go. There you go with that. Um, I think I covered the basis here. Let's take some questions. Let's bring JJ back on here. Yes, Craig Silverman's a great guy. We're looking forward to having him on the show talking about Agnostic Front and his time in Slapshot. And uh, we'll get cracking. We'll get cracking from that. Um, let me see. Let's see some questions for JJ. All right, here we go. What's up, bro? What's up? Everything work out okay? You got yourself a fresh beer? Yeah, yeah. Nice. What are you drinking? What are you drinking? Bex? Bex, yeah. German. Cheap shit. There you go. Well, it'll do. Okay, here we go. Um, let's see. Well, this is interesting. This isn't really a question, but I didn't know this. About Discharge, a must-have is the Tez book, but after the gig. Is that right? Tez has a book out? Yeah. He did kind of like, a, uh, what is it, an autobiography. You know, he had some, someone kind of translate him. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. Just a lot of crazy stories in there. Yeah. yeah. All right. Here's one yeah. from Gregor. Ask JJ if he enjoyed playing at Henry's in Edinburgh, such a teeny venue. Do you remember this show? Yeah, fucking, of course I remember that. It was, it was yeah, but it was a financial fucking nightmare right from the start. And, uh, but it just turned out to be a fucking great show. I mean, it, it was a tiny, tiny fucking, uh, it was like a cellar. Like, you know, it, it, it was just tiny. And we played there, and it was just fucking, man. 
and I think they oversold the place. And uh, I've, I've never played, you know, such a small place in my life that was so fucking rammed. But it was nuts. It, it was literally five, one, of the, one of the best gigs, memorable, that I've, I've ever played. And uh, I'm glad we did it. You know, it's, it's, you can play these big festivals and shit. But when you play these small clubs like that are up close and personal, you got everyone falling down on top of you. You know what I mean? Sometimes... Knocking out your fucking teeth, you know. That's uh, <laughs> those are the best ones. Have you got that? Have you got the mic knocked into your teeth a bunch of times? Yeah, that's oh. exactly what happened. Then. Yeah. Let me see that again. That Let me see. Fuck, man. Yeah, that was in Poland. That one. Did that happen? Uh, like, did your tooth come right out? And you're like, ah, oh, fuck. Well, it, it was funny. Because uh, we were playing, it was, it was a great gig. It was like some uh, like anti-fascist festival thing we were doing. And uh, the crowd was going for it. Everyone's up front fucking singing along. So I'm like right up there in the crowd, you know, pointing the mic. And uh, there was some young kid up front. It looked like he was probably about 17. He was like pogoing in the front. And his fucking head hit the bottom of my mic. And the mic just went, Doosh! hit me in the mouth. So I was like, what you know, I've been in the mouth. Didn't even phase me. And then uh, after after we finished the song, I'm like, I'm like, this don't feel right. I'm like, what the fuck? You know what I mean? Then I, then I realized my fucking tooth was gone. You know, I oh. could taste the blood. Yeah, I taste the blood. And uh, yeah, it's just a good type thing. I'm like, fuck it. Hey, you it know, looks cool. You, I like it. There you go. <laughs> you, you know. Well, when we were when we were talking about um, pictures and stuff, you sent me a couple pictures, and this is one of the pictures you sent yeah. me. And you said this was a crazy gig. Now I, I gotta say that from 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 my from what I could see here, this looks like an indoor venue, and it looks like something's on fire in the middle of the crowd. So it looks like a crazy gig. Yeah, that was that was in. Uh, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. I think it's. Thess Thessaloniki, Greece. Oh boy, there you yeah. go. Yeah, and uh, that that was actually in a basketball. I think it was a basketball stadium. Nice. And that, yeah, that that show was put on by like a, a football club or soccer club, depending on what country you're from. Football, soccer, whatever you want to call it. Um, had put that gig on, and the, the whole set was just fucking nuts. I mean, it was just like, like beer cans and bottles just flying in every fucking direction. Uh, the audience it just kept shooting off flares. That's what that is. It was like some flare. People kept shooting off these fucking flares in the crowd. Uh, you know, the, the whole show, I'm like dodging fucking cups of beer. And uh, we finished the set, and it was just like this atmosphere. It was fucking nuts. They were like chanting some fucking you know, the song for the football club. And I'm like, you know, but you, you could feel the tension in the air. It's like, what the fuck is going on? And I said to, to the promoter, like, you know, what the fuck is happening? Is it good or bad? You know, because I don't speak fucking Greek. Like, what are they saying? What are they, what's <laughs> happening? Here? Yeah. It's like, tell me what's, tell me what the fuck's going on. Do we, I, 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 is my life in danger here? <laughs> <laughs> well, that, yeah, that's that's kind of how it felt like. It felt like the whole crowd was just going to rush the fucking stage. It was like, do we get back up there? What do we do? And he's like, he's like, no, he's like fucking, he says they're loving it. He says they're fucking celebrating you guys. He says they're celebrating you guys. He's like, that was amazing. And then uh, a few people next day we see him. They're like, oh, he says, you know, why? Uh, came up to us that was an amazing show last night he said you guys inspired us he says we went to the to, to the turkish embassy because i think i think in greece they don't really get along with with the turks uh -huh. so he says you inspired us he said we went down to the turkish embassy and he says and uh we had a riot they actually had some kind of riot at the turkish embassy they were like throwing fucking bottles and shit <laughs> yeah and it, and it all kicked off he's like yeah discharge inspired us you know state control protest and survive so it was like well that, that was pretty cool yeah and here's here's one from nico ft 
what song, what discharge song represents JJ the best? What are what are your what are your favorite discharge songs to perform? Are, are, like what what are you? Are there any? Give me a couple that you that you really connected to. Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, I connect connect to fucking all of them, really. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, all the ones that we play, I fucking love. Um, but some of some of the ones that I love listening to, like some of my favorite discharge songs to to sit home and listen to. Uh-huh. Not my favorite. They're not necessarily my favorite to play. You know what I mean? It's like I love listening to it, but singing it, I fucking ain't singing it. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, protest and survive. I, I love that. Protest and survive. Protest and yeah. survive. <laughs> Do I like singing it? Not really. You know what I mean? I don't like singing that. Some songs, uh, like Hell on Earth. I think during our set, my my favorite's probably like Hell on Earth, Cries of Pain, and uh, obviously. You know, the stuff I wrote. Obviously, I connect to that. Yeah, um, of course. I, I mean, I mean, that must be, that must be nice too. Like, get. I mean, that that record I listened to this morning. I mean, that yeah. stuff sounds great. And, and, and are you writing all your own lyrics and stuff now? Yeah, yeah. I wrote, I wrote that whole album. And nice. Album. I did all the lyrics to that, and uh, you know, I'm trying trying to keep it. You know, with a theme of this time. You know what I mean? It's got to. You, you can't stray from that. You know, it's got it's got to be discharged. It's got to sound like discharged. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, history's proven. If they do anything else, it don't really fucking work. I think the Grave the World album, you know, proved that one. It's just you know they tried something different and like destroyed the fucking band. You know. Yeah. Pe- people. This well, that, that, sound well, like well, this well, that that already kind of happened. There, you know, like yeah. you know, discharge kind of you know started out you know cal was singing they 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 sort of they changed direction a little bit they kind of lost yeah. that original core audience they broke yeah. up for a couple years and then when yeah. they came back they really sort of said hey you know we're we're going to go with what our roots were we're going to go with you know kind of our, our our and 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 listen we're all happy we're all happy about that because yeah. you know it, it, and and I can relate you know, I can relate with the yeah. band that I'm in. You know, we started out, you know, we were a New York hardcore band and we sort of went in a little bit of a different direction for a while. And then you sort of, you work it out of your system and then you yeah. come back and you, you, you know, you play the stuff that, that, you know. Well, that's it. You know what I mean? If it ain't broke, don't fucking fix it. You know what I mean? Yeah. If this song's ain't broke, you know, it's like fucking, you don't need to change that shit. But yeah. I, I get it though. You know what I mean? I, I do get it because it's like, you don't want to just carry. You don't want to keep playing the same fucking thing all the time. And right. I think this with, with with discharge, we're kind of doomed to that. You know what I mean? It's like everyone <laughs> just wants another. Everyone wants another. Hear nothing, see nothing. Yeah. And it's like we can play that for the rest of our lives. You know what I mean? We'd like to be doing something different, but uh, yeah. you know, which is why I, I'm kind of I'm starting this whole other thing. You know what I mean? I'm I'm doing a, a whole different band, which is something completely fucking different. I don't even well, that's good. I mean, that's it. that's what it's there for, yeah. man. I mean, you know, you well, go. That's it. Yeah, that's what it's there for, man. And then you go back to discharge and, and you rip it. You know, it's like yeah, exactly. You know, so yeah. I'm doing something else, completely, completely different style. You know, but it's with some fucking great guys. You know, a good friend of mine, JP. Like I said, Stig from Mebix, and uh, boy. Wayne Yoga from uh, Stone Sour, Nausea. Right. You know, he's a fucking awesome drummer. So hey, here's uh, a here's a question from our boy Chucky Brown from Crazy Eddie. Speaking of Crazy Eddie, right? Right. Crazy Eddie, yeah. <laughs> for those for those well, for those that may not know around the world, cra- uh, Crazy Eddie was uh, a brand of angel dust here in New York in in the '90s that a lot of uh, a lot of people used to smoke, so that's where I, you hear the the mention of Crazy Eddie. What we're referring to, in some context, is PCP. Smoke. It's P- Thank you, P- <laughs> thank you, PCP. So yeah. Chucky Brown, Chucky Brown, uh, who sings for a New York hardcore band called Crazy Eddie, says, uh, "Can you speak on the book uh, on the book he was in called Punk and Neo Tribal Body Art back in '94? Do you remember this book that you were in?" Yeah, you showed the picture actually earlier. Yeah, it was just. Uh, I think yeah, I was smoking. 
you know, I was squatting, like I said, I think that was after my squat got busted, and we were just sleeping in town of the park, and, uh, you know, some fucking guy came in. At, at that time, you know, looking punk, everyone wanted your photo, you know. I mean, it's kind of normal now, everyone's, everyone's got tattoos, everyone's got different color hair, it's, it's nothing really, but back then, people were freaked, freaked out by it, it was like, oh my god, look at him, like, he looks fucking weird on his photo. So we used to charge people. Like we used to go up to Broadway, Spange, and as we called it, spare change. And, and uh, you know, tourists would always, you know, the tourists on Broadway, they want photos with punk rockers. So we used to charge them. They're like, yeah, you can have a photo. Give me fucking three, three bucks. You know what I mean? Three dollars for the picture. And, uh, but anyway, yeah, that photo in Tompkins Square Park, it was some guy who just came in. Yeah, it was the same exact thing. It's, it's, you know, can I take a picture? I said, yeah, buy me a fucking slice of pizza or something. So he bought me a slice of pizza. And, hmm. uh, you know, I didn't think anything of it at the time because everybody was taking photos. I think I think I was in a poster for a film. I even got yeah. asked to audition for that movie, uh, Kids. Remember that movie, Kids? From the early 90s? Yes, of course, of course, sure. Yeah, someone, someone gave me like this audition card for it, like wanted to try out for that film, and I, I was like, oh, what the fuck is this? Like some stupid, like fucking student film. I was like, fuck this. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then about a year later, I seen it like in all the fucking movie theaters. It was like kids, I was like, are you serious? <laughs> I could have been laughing. Um, yeah, but anyway, going back to to Chucky's question. Yeah, it was just some guy. Asked to take a photo. He bought me a slice of pizza. Uh, I disappeared. I left New York. And I came back up probably about a year later. And someone came up to me and actually had a book. I was walking through the park. Someone recognized me, like someone I used to know. They're like, JJ, did I check this out? You're, you're in this book. Like, and, uh, wow. Yeah, that was how just a book. <laughs> there you go. Hey, so let me let, let's do this. Um, I got a couple pictures. You know, I, I hate doing the show and then and then going, fuck, I forgot to put that picture. So let's quickly let's go through a couple pictures. Here's the here's the first one. And uh I mean, uh tell us about uh who's in this picture with you and and uh Yeah, that's Jock out of uh GBH. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's you know He's a friend, uh, you know, we play together all the time and it's, you know, it's just like, back, you know, back where you are in New York, it's a big family and it's the same thing here. You know, we've got a punk rock family and, you know, Jock's, Jock's one of the regulars and he's, fucking, so, so, you know, he's so, a great guy, man. So in being in Discharge, uh, mm -hmm. I, I'm assuming that over there, especially in Europe, you know, you guys end up you know, kind of bunched together a lot. Bands like Discharge and GBA oh, and the Exploited. Yeah. So I, I yeah. assume you guys end up seeing each other a couple times a year on some of these All like the some of these hard yeah. ass fucking festivals, like in Slovakia yeah. or in Poland <laughs> or or in Russia, right? Some of those crazy yeah. ass festivals, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. All, yeah, all the time. You know, we we just see each other everywhere. You know. Yeah. The most random the the most random countries i mean that, that that photo that you showed before with the body that was in austria that was on the rooftop of a squat <laughs> right okay here's yeah, another yeah. one yeah. here's another here's another one and i and and i like these guys a lot too i worked with them back in the day uh give us a little so, take sure. on this yeah max and uh max and igor from sepultura and that was uh you know, they're, they're massive Discharge fans. And yeah. uh, I yeah. mean, I, I became pretty good friends with Igor. And they were playing, they're playing in Birmingham. Didn't I, see a clip, didn't I see a clip of, of you on stage with them? That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So he, he invited us down to the show. Yeah. And uh, he says, right. He says, if you come into the show, he says, "Don't think you're gonna get away with not singing a fucking discharge song." Oh, I might it's, have to. I might have to find that. Keep talking. Go ahead. Yeah. So he says, "Don't think you're gonna get away with not singing a song because uh, that was with Cavalera Conspiracy, and they they yeah. play uh, two discharge songs in a set. 
Uh, I think the nightmare continues. But no, sorry, hear nothing and uh, and protest and survive. And uh, so we went down to the show, we hung out, and yeah, me and Bones fucking just rocked out with him, man. It was fucking great. Great time. Here it is. Oh, right here. Hold on. Hold your horses. Hold on. Hey, let's uh, let's take a look at this. Why not, huh? Hold on. This is pretty rip. This is pretty rip it. I saw this. Hold on. Let's find. Let me hold on. It's Keeler. It's Keeler. Keeler. That's right. I want you to come on stage with us. It's going to be Keeler. We're going it's to play the deep part. It's Keeler. Listen to me. It's Keeler, Drew. All right, <laughs> Nailed, it. All right. Nailed it. I love those guys. Here we go. Great. All right. All right. Yeah, yeah. yeah that was that, a great night, man. That yo, great. that looks like now that's that's fun, man. That looks fun. Yeah. Yeah, and it, it was a rarity to actually get Bones to come out as well. You'll never see Bones doing something like that. You know, but Bones is, uh, you know, he's very quiet and he, he stays home with that Bones. Right. And uh, it, it was great to get him out that night and do something different, you know what I mean? So that, That's it cool. was actually special having Bones come along for that. Hey, yeah. how, about th how about this one, bro? <laughs> Those are our boys, man. Yeah, I love these fucking guys, man. What can I say? Sick, sick of it all. Uh, you know, and again, another one of these men, we're always playing with sick of it all, all the time. Oh, really? Yeah. really? All the time, yeah. These on uh, these European festivals. Yeah. It's like you guarantee, like, maybe we could fly out to fucking whatever weird fucking country. They're sick of it like, all. You, you fly out to fucking, like, you know, like, uh, God, <laughs> Uzbekistan. Yeah, we'll play like Uzbekistan or some right. shit. And the, they're right. sick of it all. You know what I mean? And uh, they're, they're fucking great guys. You yeah, know? we love them, bro. Yeah, yeah. and the, how fucking good are they live, man? Yeah. They're, you know, they're, they're one of my favorite bands to watch live. You know, the energy that they've got live is just like. They got it going on. Yeah. Yeah, they they they're they're great. And and one last one, uh, who's a big favorite of ours here on the show. He's he's been on the show. Uh, he's playing the event. You know, he's playing the streaming event on Sunday. Of course, this guy. <laughs> and who who doesn't know Vinny? Yeah, I mean, you, you know what? Yeah. I was gonna say for the first time I met Vinny, he probably don't even remember this, but uh, I, th I think it was when I said I was like used to go Broadway, Spain, and stuff. I was on out of the way. I was trying to get some fucking chains up and some beers, you know, when I was like seventeen. And here comes Stigma. I was like, hey, I said, you got any chains, bro? He's like, what? What, what, what do you want a beer? He's like, you want a beer? He's like, come on. I was like, come on. I'll fucking buy a beer. So we went to. Uh, what was that bar? Oh, Manitoba's. We went to Manitoba's behind the park. That, you know, fucking, we all, he bought me a beer. We all, yeah, that was the first time I met Stig. I was like, wow. Yo, and you, you know, and like, you were on the, on, the, on the street, on the street, uh, you know, spare changing. And, and that's how, yeah. yeah, that's awesome, man. I met, and funnily enough, I actually met Roger the same way. I met Roger the same way. The same, almost the same exact spot I met Vinny on a different day. And it was the same situation. I, think, I was walking past. And uh, I think I was with that Ted Kennedy's Nazi punk's truck off shirt. Right. And uh, 
Roger was there. He's like, he goes, Nazi punks, fuck off. He goes, I'm a Nazi. What are you going to do about it? I was like, get the fuck. I knew who he was. I knew he was fucking around. Cause ah. I could see the tattoo on his chest. Yeah, yeah. And he was, he's like, nah, man. He says, I'm just messing with you. And this, that was probably at like 3 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, we just hung out. And we, we love those guys, man. I mean, yeah, you know. yeah. I just, uh, I just, uh, Vinny yeah. was just on the show the other day. I, you know, and uh, he knows you're coming on. He was like, I love that guy, you know. <laughs> he's, he's, Vinny, he's, yeah, the, the, him and his stogies, you know. Yeah. Cigars, yeah. man. Cigars. Yeah. He, yeah, those guys, those guys smoke their cigars. So, hey, let's, yeah, um, let me bring on, let me bring on my guys. And uh, we'll have a couple words, and, and and we'll wrap it up here. So let's let's bring on uh, Rap Bones and Sid, and and, 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 and even Steven. And even even Steven. Steven. Even, even, even Steven. That's his name. Hey, hey Steven, I'm gonna mute you until you talk because it, it's loud. So hey, Rap Bones, uh, Sid, you got anything for JJ on the way out the door? Just no, I, I, that picture with the fireworks just speaks a, a, a million words. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, sums up but my J life, don't it? <laughs> but JJ, would you, would you do that at a really big festival again? That's a good idea, actually. Yeah. Hey, yeah. did you um? You know what? You know what? I, I, somebody posted, uh, Sid, when you were on the road with the take, didn't JJ come out and do a do a? Yeah, JJ came up and did "It's My Life" with the take. Actually, well, Mad Ball cover, AF cover, you know. Nice. Oh, you know, it was fun. I mean, like I said, that show, like a lot of, for those who were at that venue, honestly, through the 13, 14 dates I worked with Agnostic Front and the Take, Single Handedly was the best show on that tour. Hands, Where was it? Uh, Temple of Boom, uh, Temple of Boom, I believe in, uh, was it, was it Bristol, Jeff? No, Leeds. Leeds, Leeds. Oh, Leeds. Yeah, Temple Ooh. of Boom. That's well, for those fucking great venue. Yeah, that's yeah, for great people venue. It's actually, it, it's actually in trouble right now. Uh, they might have to close down due to COVID, and I think they got some kind of like GoFundMe, so help them out if they could. Yeah, definitely. Yes, man. I just saw Leeds. I, I said my first time being there. It was basically to me like the, the UK version of CB. Small, yes, yeah. dang little shithole, but it's like yeah. the vibe was so amazing. People there were so friendly, so fucking cool. Bartender staff, everybody top to bottom were fucking amazing that night. It was such a dirty, amazing dirty, dirty leads. Um, it is, yes, dirty, dirty, dirty leads. Yeah, I remember I always remember leads. I mean, when I was on the road with Biohazard and, and when I was out with uh with the Misfits and Sub Zero, I, to me, Leeds was always a good stop on the tour. Leeds was always a, a great, a great, you know, great show. But also because, I mean, just because it, it was one of my favorite shows, basically Roger and them did Victim and Pain front to back, United Blood front to back. They only did one. All right, all right. Dogs. All right. right. That, 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 crazy yeah. now, Sid. Um, that, that hey, hey, Rap Bones, you got anything You got anything for JJ on the way out? Just want to say it was great seeing you, JJ, and uh, I'm uh, proud that you're repping, man. You know, Jersey, oh, man. your thing the way you are, and – uh. Yo, you know, we did our thing, man. Uh, we're a we, lot. We started to. You know, uh, a lot of people didn't make it. You know, that went through the whole homeless, drugs, alcohol, and everything. So, you know, yeah, for all the man, all the best you always brought was great to see you. When you come back over to the States, let me know. We'll get crazy. Yeah, you know, man. it's great seeing Excellent. you. Excellent. You too, man. Hey, Rap Bones, we'll see ya. Sid, we'll see ya. Steven, what's up with you, man? How, how, how are you driving that thing or are you a passenger? I'm, I'm, we'll just say I'm a passenger for now. <laughs> yeah, no, we're, I'm, I'm heading home. All right, good. On a train? Not too bad. This is, yeah, yeah, he, work, oh, he yeah, works yeah, for I'm the railroad. Home, man. Steven works All for right. the railroad. You get free free yeah. rides then? Yeah. Well, yeah, absolutely. Nice. You yeah. gonna you, you come here, you tell me you know me, you're good. This is a real, it's a, it's a real working, it's a real working class show. Steve, Steven actually does the show, does the show from his job, you know. That's it. oh, it's true. Yeah. Right Steven, we're, we're eastbound. Eastbound and down. 
That's it. <laughs> you got anything for JJ on the way out the door, Stephen? This, this has been great. This has been I've really, really enjoyed. Uh, no, I just wanted to say I've been really enjoyed the story, and this is my first chance to actually kind of meet him, which I think is an honor. And uh, I, I got to tell you, I uh, I'm just I'm just captivated by this. Your your New Jersey English accent is is makes makes the interview. You know, it really. Uh, what can I say? I, I captivate myself sometimes. Uh, you, you know. know. <laughs> You switch over as a few words every now and then. You go back to Jersey and then you go back over there. And, uh, <laughs> and, and it's true, like like I said, you know, Brits are like you're American, my American. Like, what the fuck, you're British. What? I'm you, like, get uh, you get it from both sides, huh? Yeah, yeah, it's true. It's true. Best it is right, worth the bus, you know. Hey, Stephen, we'll, Stephen, we'll talk soon. And uh, absolutely, we're, we're absolutely. looking for we're looking forward to uh, to Sunday show with Craig Silverman, and then the yeah. live streaming, and then the live streaming event afterwards. Sunday's going to be a, a, del, a double header. It's going to be amazing. All right, buddy. Thank you for everything. I'll talk. JJ, to you soon. take care of yourself. Be good. All right. See you, pal. Those are my boys, JJ. Yeah, yeah, your your boys are my boys, man. That's right, that's right, man. No, a, a, absolutely. Hey, man, yeah. I want to thank you so much for coming on. We we could thank have done this, we could have done this for a couple of hours. You always, I know, you're, I know. you're always welcome here, bro. Uh, okay. You, know, you have to come back soon. You know, when, when discharge gets up and running again, you know, please. Yeah. 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 Definitely. Definitely. Anybody? Thanks. Anybody you want to shout out? Anybody you want to thank? Um. You know, I'll say the usual, you know, my mom, my dad, uh, all the guys in Discharge, you know, what's up? Missing you guys. Hope we get together soon. So I'm working on some new stuff. Stig, JP, Perry, Unholy Alliance, so Vision. Uh, I could go on and on. There's probably so many people I'm forgetting. But if you're in my life, you know, you are Mandy, my you know, my girl, love of my life. I love you. Most important people ever. So, yeah, I forgot you. Sorry. But until next time. All right, Thanks, JJ. I'll, I'll, I'll thank, thank you, bro. You. It, it was a real, yeah. it was an honor and a pleasure. And, and it's such a great story, man. Uh, we're all so proud of you, man. You know, you went from thank living you. in a squat and fucking spare changing you know, to, yeah. to fronting really one of the greatest, most most iconic punk fucking hardcore bands you know in the world. So you know, all the best for you, bro. Thank you, Joe. Thank you. I'll talk, I'll talk to you soon. All right. Wow. Well, there you go. Wow. What a story, man. What what an incredible story. This fucking guy was spare changing in the Lower East Side, and now he's singing for Discharge. You know, that is just man. That's heavy. And, uh, you know, good, good for him, man. Uh, everybody out there, thank you for tuning in. This was the New York Hardcore Chronicles Live, sponsored by New York Hardcore Comics, The Organic Grill, The Texas Chill Rush, Chain Reaction Records and Skateboards, and your hardcore fan page. I want to remind everybody one last time about the, uh, the live streaming event that is happening on Sunday. Please. Please, 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 police department, please pick up a ticket at www.thebowerielectric.com. Also, I want to remind you that Rap Bones' birthday event is coming up on Saturday. Right, Rap Bones? Not forgetting you, right? This, sat this Saturday, right? Yeah, one to eight. 300 Knickerbocker, Bushwick, the L to Jefferson. You walk through the park, look for the ugly people. Got it. We'll see you then. Yeah, man. It's gonna be all right. So Rap Bones' this thing is Saturday. Um, yes, we will be playing Conspiracy of None. Uh, it is in the set. Of course, we're playing it. Um, there you go. And do good things and get the 19 anyway. What does that mean? Uh, punk's not dead. Nope. No, not yet. Hi, Gina. Uh also, you know, I, I mentioned this uh one last, uh, I'm gonna, I want to mention, I want to mention this again, um, before I go. We're putting together a, a people's show once again, and we got to get some girls on the show, Gina. So, big, big, 
big cattle call for the girls, you know, big casting call going out. Uh, if you're one of my patrons and you are female of the species, we got to get some girls on the show. So please, please, please come on, the, come on the show when we do that. Uh, Frankie too far. Thank you. Good. Good to see you. Uh, hardcore lives worldwide. It absolutely does. Yes. We like girls on this show. We like girls for sure. You know, on this show during this pandemic, listen, girls, women, whatever you want to, whatever you want to call them. <laughs> oh yes. The people, ladies, it's all good. You know, we don't get, we don't really get too hung up on that shit on this show. You know, oh, girls, ladies, this or that, you know, you know what I mean? You know what we mean? You know, um, what's this? Can we see the show from the Barry Electric if I'm in the neighborhood or no? No, you can't. Don't come by the Barry Electric because you ain't going to get in. It's a streaming show. They don't want a bunch of people bunched up outside. Buy a ticket, take the ride, www.thebarryelectric.com. Females. Oh, here's a good one. Girls to do the laundry. Girls to clean up my room. Girls back in the day. Mm -mm -mm -mm. They like my home slice MCA. So, yeah. Whatever you <laughs> Senoritas. Oh, here we go. Senoritas. Uh, goddesses. Uh, females. Yes. Ladies. Women. Babes. Chicks. Whatever. Just buy a ticket for the Bowery Electric show already, huh? Come on. You know, there you go. That said, let's not break any records here. Let's, uh, let's, let's, uh, let's get moving. Thank you, everyone. I will see you on Sunday for Craig Silverman from Agnostic Front. Thank you, everyone around the world. Thank you for making this show a success. You are the reason that this show is a success. We have lots of great stuff to do together in the future. Until then. <laughs> Nobody noticed my, my new DOA poster. It's not new. It's been in my closet for, you know, I, I try to mix it up every, I, I try to. Listen, are you for real? What time is Craig's show? Really? I've done 65 shows that start at the same time. Three o'clock East Coast time. Every show starts at three o'clock. You know? Another grand slam. True. Farewell from Troy. We've met the enemy and the enemy is us. Troy, New York. Good night, Scotland. Good night, New York hardcore, wherever you are. Do good things and good things will come to you.